Julianne, you can let us know when you see it on YouTube. On YouTube now, I'm just going to add it to the website. You're good to go. Okay, folks, we will call our meeting to order. And our first item is our land acknowledgement. And I would like to begin by acknowledging that we are in Mi'kma'ki and the district of Sabaganagadi, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Next, we will have a moment of silent contemplation. Next is the approval of or amendments to the agenda. So moved. Second. Moved by Councillor Green, seconded <laughs> by, I think it was Councillor Musa. Uh, any discussion? Question. Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary, motion has carried. Next is correspondence for information. Approval of the agenda. Approval of the minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. No, approval of the minutes. We approved the agenda, correct? Okay, the one next, that's the minutes. Okay, my apologies. Approval of the minutes of December 22nd, 2021, regular meeting of council. So moved. Hello. Moved by the deputy warden, seconded by Councillor Green. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary, motion is carried. Now we will go to correspondence for information. And the correspondence is before you. Is there any item that uh, any counselor wishes to draw particular attention to or has any questions about? Seeing none, we will move to correspondence for decision. The first item is a request from the Earth Keepers to present to Council. And you uh, have the correspondence in front of you. So what is your wish? Do we need to hear from the Earth Keepers uh, before we have a report in to committee in February? Uh, what is the wish of council? We could hear them, do you wish to hear them before we get the report or after we get the report or what is the wish? Councillor Rhino. Yes, it would be my thought that we hear the report first. Hear the report first? Yes. Any other councillors? You prepared to make that a motion, councillor? So moved. Second. Moved by Councillor Rhino, seconded by Councillor Tingley, that we receive uh, the staff report prior to hearing from the Earth Keepers. So I believe an opportunity could be extended after we have the report. So is there any discussion on the motion? Question. Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion has passed unanimously. Next is a letter from the Lance and Elmsdale Fire Departments regarding a change in fire boundaries. And uh, item 14 will be a similar request, I see. So. Wait till it's opened on the screen and Deputy Warden Mitchell. Yes, yeah, so thank you, uh, Madam Warden. I met with uh, Elmsdale and discuss the two proposals to uh, change the boundaries. And 
based on the way the boundaries have now been reconfigured, it is a an, an important request and both other fire departments, Enfield and Lance have signed off on it. Okay. So I guess what we would be looking for is a motion to approve the boundary change. Uh, do we have to approve that or do the fire departments simply approve that themselves? I would, th I would think the council sh yeah. should approve it because it does affect uh, in Enfield some um, some civic addresses, which would have would affect uh, levies coming towards Elmsville, okay. which we now be going to Enfield. Okay. So, are you prepared to? I'll prepare to make that motion to accept the both changes as presented. So that is the change that's in front of us between Lance and Elmsdale, and also the change for the boundaries between Elmsdale and Enfield. Is that correct? That's correct. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Knockwood. Is there any discussion? Question. Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary? Motion has passed unanimously. Next, we have a letter from Nova Scotia Public Works regarding the offer to convey Sylvia Avenue in Milford. Through you, Madam Warden, if we could get uh, Adam to present this report to or this letter to Council. Good evening, Ward. Good evening, Warden Council. Um, so, through the uh, corporate services real estate function, um, this is being presented. It really has stemmed from a review of the park track culture needs uh, for the area. So, if the municipal um, clerk or assistant municipal clerk could scroll down to the second page. To appendix a or the third page i can kind of provide more context to council as why this is in front of them so in milford on sylvia <clears throat> there's a large chunk of land there you can see on the east side of the property um, below the red uh, walkway area or it's currently listed as drainage that came in for review from an open space contribution uh, for needs when parks rec culture reviewed it they were looking at the long-term needs um, and to the uh, north of that property is the high school. So long-term that uh, what's listed as a drainage conveyance uh, could be a walkway. And when they looked at it, the actual drainage is not on that property. It's on the property to the well east, um, that larger parcel. So the property from the province is um, essentially a non-drainage area. So the province has uh, suggested it could be conveyed to the municipality for a dollar. It would be put into kind of our future reserve from a Parks Rec culture perspective, should we want long-term connectivity into the high school. Um, but part of this process, just to flag for council as it is listed drainage, is that through the final stages of this, we would make sure that there is no requirements for drainage, uh, maintenance or anything uh, for the municipality moving forward. Uh, so that would be our due diligence part of this, should council want to accept this land. It is being proposed for a dollar. It's approximately six meters wide and 40 meters in length. Okay. Any councilor have any comments? Councilor Rhino? Uh, I guess I would move, I would uh, uh, move that this be considered under, uh, I think planning would be the best committee to deal with this. Well, it would actually, I think, because it's land that parks, rec, and culture would be interested in, that might be the, the committee we would want if you want it reviewed by committee. Yes, I would send, I would uh, move that this be referred to the Parks, Recreation and Culture Committee. Do we have a seconder? I'll second it. Seconded by Councillor Hebb. Just a quick question. Is there any time sensitivity in this, Adam? Uh, Warden, um, I believe there's a six weeks response time that's listed in the letter um, for acceptance kind of of the conveyance, but we could work with the province should it need to go through, should council move it through the committee process. 
uh, on that. So, so it is a six week timeline within the letter. However, we would work with the province. From the date of the letter, which was? Ooh. So I would just ask council, the date of a letter is December 17th. So we're, there is a bit of constraint should the province not want to uh, work with us. Does that, uh, I guess, does that change the motion? Are we prepared to discuss it tonight or do we still want to go through the committee route? Councillor Musa. Thank you, Orden. Uh, I think if staff satisfied with the piece of land, I said we should move and accept it now. Why, why should we to bring it to committee? Okay, Councillor Hebb. Yeah, I, I agree with uh, Councillor Musa. It's pretty well uh, open and cut there. It's, it's, it's not a whole lot of issues to be there. So uh, technically, I don't think it really needs to go back to uh, to parks and recs, and we could probably deal with it here tonight. Just my so opinion. I would, ask, I would ask the mover if he's interested in recalling his motion? Well, if I may, uh, no, not really. Uh, I don't think you you land something like this here uh, uh, this evening. And, and uh, you know, I there's no, I don't see any or have been privy to any uh, photos uh, of the area. I'm not familiar with Sylvia Avenue. So uh, I would, uh, you know, and to put it, send a letter on December 17th, put a time frame on it. Uh, you know, uh, I think it's rather unfair. Okay. So the motion is on the floor, councillors, to send it to committee. So if you're in favor of sending it to committee and waiting to discuss it then, then that's the way to vote. If uh, you wish to do it sooner, then this motion would need to be defeated before we could do that. So any further discussion? Question. Questions been called. All those in favor? Contrary? Yes. Motion is defeated. Councillor Rhino voting yay and everyone else voting nay. So is someone prepared to move that we move forward to accept this piece of property? Councillor Hebb. Yes, Madam Warden, I move that we uh, get staff and, and an authorization to move ahead and purchase this property. Do we have a second? Second, seconded by Councillor Green, Councillor Rhino. Uh, just the question, if that was sent on the December 17th, uh, how come it wasn't on the 18th uh, uh, agenda? Or was it? And then we didn't do Park Recreation and Culture, we moved it apart, so. Yeah, it looks familiar. But uh... I do not remember. Adam, do you know if it was on the agenda and was put off until today? No, um, uh, through your warden, no, it was not on the agenda. And I'm just trying to recall uh, correctly the, the timeline that it came in um, through, through our records. And um, because it came, I'm just going to pull it up here on my screen to the cover page, or if you could scroll back up to the top page there for me, please. Um, I think as it came with correspondence, um, it was put through the new year through the council agenda. I don't think it came in time for the committee agenda because the committee was uh, earlier. Yeah, the 17th was on a Friday and we had had committee on the 14th. So theoretically, I guess we could have brought it to council on the 22nd would have been the earliest. No, but why couldn't we have had it to January the 18th in council? This is okay. December. A three year warning. I'd have to go back and look um, at the dates that it actually came in to stuff. It is dated December 17th, whether we received it on that date or with the holidays, it may have not come through to, to the new year. I, I really can't answer that question. I could get back to council on that at a later time. Um, well, I know the mail is slow. But from December 17th, and we couldn't get that in for executive on the 18th of January. Uh, I just have some questions around that. However, there is a motion on the floor. Any further discussion? Question on the motion. 
questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary? Nay. Motion has passed. Councilor Rhino voting nay. Next item. A request from Robin Wilbur seeking a letter of support for Northern Pulp. I don't know if someone on staff is going to, I guess we've all seen the letter and there is a proposed form letter that accompanies this letter. I, I will go on record as saying that I am not in favor of council responding via a form letter to any decision we might make. That's just my personal preference. Thank you, Madam Warden. I did not have anyone on tap to speak to this. The letter speaks for itself. I think the issue was very public last year and we've had presentations at council from um, from Mr. Wilbur uh, on this. So uh, I guess we'd follow, uh, implement whatever council wants to do with this letter here this evening. Councillor Garden Cole. Thank you, Madam Warden. Um, I tend to agree with you. I, I see this more as a, uh, as a provincial, I know he's looking for municipal support, but I just see it as a provincial uh, issue and, and I would be hesitant to, um, to fill out a form as well. Supporting it. Thank you. Councillor Perry. Uh, yes, just to echo what uh, Councillor Garden Cole is saying and yourself, the warden. Uh, I don't know in intricate the details with everything. Um, what's put in that letter is is uh, is not the uh, I, you know there's no there's no environmental reports or anything for us to make a decision on. I really believe this belongs with the. Uh, Picto uh, First Nations and the town of Picto to to decide it because it was that area resides in their municipality. I am 100% behind those who are affected uh, by the employment of that mill being operational, but the environmental impacts uh, are in that community and and I just don't have enough information to vote to send anything in support of a, a project that I don't have all the information on. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Knockwood. Yeah, well. I totally disagree with um, what was put forward. And um, when I read it there a little bit last week, I called Chief Andrea and she said, there's no communication yet with uh, the province and the company to uh, the Pictal Man and First Nation. So, uh, so I, I, gotta, I gotta go with um, the Pictal Man and also the town of Pictal. Uh, and let them decide and that the problems is, is their battle should not, I don't think it should even come to our municipality. I understand some of the companies want to support them. Yeah, support them, but don't bring them in on our lap. And uh, I think it's not right. Uh, it's not put us on the hot seat either because uh, I, I know logging is pretty um, big in Nova Scotia and there's another battle down, down um, protecting the mainland moose it's uh like we, we can talk about forestry all night but i don't want to but um no i'm not a supporter of uh, sending any letters of support for northern pulp thank you very much Lovely. okay thank you um as has been expressed by several counselors we don't have access to exactly what the environmental assessment is looking like or the timelines or anything um we could certainly move to receive this and place it on file. There's nothing to prevent us from revisiting it in the future if we so desire when we have further information. Because uh, as others have said, we certainly are supportive of folks who work in the forestry industry, but we're also supportive of the environmental issues. And as Councillor Perry said, to, to make a, a recommendation and a decision before all the information is in front of us is, is very difficult. So I just wonder if anyone's prepared to make a motion. Councillor Green. Move we uh, receive the report and place it on file. Second. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Question. Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary, 
motion has passed unanimously. No, I, I vote nay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Councillor. Councillor Knock would voting nay. So we will not be sending the, uh, the letter at this time. Next item, request from the trustees of the South Rodden Hall to turn mm -hmm. the facility over to the municipality. And is anyone Alana. on staff? Alana? Alana, sir. Thank you, Madam Morgan. Good evening. Uh, early in the new year, um, an individual reached out to Parks, Recreation and Culture and, um, on behalf of, I believe, a board of three trustees for the South Ron Hall. Um, they can't um, support the maintenance of it any longer. They're unable to fundraise. Um, part of it is COVID, but I think the other part is just um, the difficulty, as most other groups have, getting volunteers to assist with this type of thing. So, they're not actually looking for funding or anything like that. They're actually indicating they'd like to just sort of give everything over to the municipality. Um, through some further discussion uh, with corporate services, the title to the land is entirely in uh, with the municipality. We thought initially that perhaps it was a joint ownership, but it's not. So um, I guess it's for council discussion and, and whatever motion it may look like to decide um, what next steps would be in this process. Well, this is in my district. So with council's permission, I would turn the uh, chair over to the deputy warden. Uh, go ahead, warden. I'll accept the chair mm -hmm. for now. Um, certainly, um, I know this hall was well used at one time, not so much in the last few years. Um, given our, our previous experiences with uh, community halls and communities, uh, I would personally like to see some consultation done with, uh, with the community uh, via the other, other board members or, and you know, maybe some community folk before we you know, make a firm decision. Um, Having said that, you know, they, is there, were we on the building? Is there some way that we could make sure there was oil in the tank while these conversations are had? Um, I know, I don't know how it would work. There certainly are funds, I believe in my district rec funds, which I would certainly, you know, be supportive of directing some that way while we do have some consultation with with the South Rodden folks and uh, just to make sure that there isn't somebody there who once they find out that the hall may be closing forever and uh, be sold or whatever were to take place would might uh, say, oh no, we would certainly be interested. So Kim, do you have any? A three, Madam Warden, if, if um sort of turning the keys over is as imminent as it sounds to be in the letter. Uh, we can certainly work with them if you want to make, make a motion to spend some district recreation funds from your district to keep the hall afloat until, um, you know, this would be an appropriate report to go to committee. Um, I can't make promises for Alana and her team, but maybe for January um, to outline some of the options and- February. Or February, sorry. <laughs> um, we can certainly ask them to fill the tank and send us the bill if that's your wish. Well, I, I would move that this be sent to a committee um, February if possible, March if not, and uh, that uh, staff be authorized to communicate with the group. And in the interim, that uh, funds be allocated from District 7, or sorry, District 11, District Rec funds to make sure that the uh, heat and power are kept on while consultation with the community and reports are generated. Is there a seconder to the motion? I'd second it. Seconded by uh, Councillor Tingley regarding the South Rodden Hall. Any questions? Question. Question being called. All those Councillor Musa had a question. Okay, Councillor Musa. Uh, thank you, Deputy Warden. 
Ellen, Elena, did you say the the hall is in municipality name now or in the committee on the uh, organization name, like whatever, like the the group's name? Uh, sorry, I missed the first part of that. Uh, the, Were you uh, wondering about the ownership? The ownership is it? You said is not joint. It was who owns it now? No, no, through you. Uh, Madam Warden, it's not a joint ownership. Initially, we thought that it may have been, but when we checked the title, it's it's just in the municipality's name. So, if it's a municipal a, a municipality building, why should be the not the general tax paying for that? Same as any other building. I could, because it's been managed by this community group as a community hall in the community of South Rodden for many, many, many years, uh, similar to in how in some districts, uh, I mean, the Tinsmith Museum, for example, in Shubenacadie is owned by the municipality, but okay. that group gets district rec funds to look after that. So I don't have a problem with, with taking enough out of district rec funds to, to keep That's the good. building heat and power on until we sort through what's to be done with it. Okay. Anything else, uh, Council Musa? Thank you. Any other comments? Question. Question's been called on the motion. All those in favor say aye, raise your hand. Aye. aye. Uh, contrary minded? Uh, motion is passed. Uh, giving you back the chair, Madam Warden. Thank you, Deputy Warden. Next was the request to change the Enfield Elmsdale Fire District boundary. And I believe that was dealt with in the previous motion. So that would now be redundant. So returning to our agenda, the next item is the Corporate and Residential Services Committee report, <coughs> Councillor Perry. Thank you, Madam Warden. The committee held its regular meeting on January 18th, 2022 via Zoom. The following motions are coming forward as a result of this meeting. First item, 2022-2023 budget presentation, business plans and tax analysis. The Director of Finance presented a report titled Budget and Tax Analysis 2022-2023. The presentation ended on page 49 and will continue at the budget meeting scheduled for the 3rd of February, 2022. Second item. 2022 Polling District Review Report Number 1. The MGA requires the municipality to conduct a review of its polling districts in 2022 in preparation for the 2024 election. The number of districts, districts has to be reviewed and justified. The district boundaries also have to be reviewed to ensure the number of electors in each district are generally within plus or minus 10 percent. In addition, council can use this review as an opportunity to explore the option to switching to a, a mayoral system for the warden from the warden system. Staff have outlined the process for conducting the review in their report. The corporate residential service committee rec recommends to council that council direct staff to bring a further report back to council with the topic of mayor versus warden. As chair of the committee, I so move. We have a seconder. Seconded. Seconded by Councillor Green. Is there any discussion on the motion? Question. Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary minded? Motion has passed unanimously. Moving on, the Corporate Residential Service Committee recommends to Council that Council authorize staff to write a letter to the government seeking an extension up to one year due to COVID restrictions, hoping we can have public consultation in person on the topic of the 2022 Polling District Review. As Chair of the Committee, I so move. Seconded. Second. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Question. Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion has passed unanimously. The Corporate and Residential Service Committee recommends to Council, the Council authorized staff to conduct the 2022 Polling District Review using the process outlined in the staff report, 2022 Polling District Review Report Number 1, attached to the Executive Committee agenda, dated, dated January 18th, 2022. As Chair of the Committee, I so move. Second. Second. 
Not sure who seconded, but moved and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion? Question. Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion has passed unanimously. As chair of the committee, I move the adoption of this report. Second. Seconded by Councillor Musa. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary? Motion has passed unanimously. So moving along, the next item is Infrastructure and Operations Committee report. Councillor Musa, over to you. Thank you, Madam Warden. The committee held this regular monthly meeting on January 18, 2022 via Zoom. There are the following motions are coming forward as a result of, the, of that meeting. First one, Shubenacadie Wastewater Treatment Plant Construction Budget. Prior to going to market for the construction of the Shubenacadie Wastewater Treatment Plant, and in order to support project timeline, staff are requesting approval of an additional to be made to the existing project budget ahead of the full capital budget review. The Infrastructure and Operation Committee recommends to Council that Council increase the total budget for project 10-022 wastewater treatment plan replacement, Shubenacadi to 7,705,000 with the additional of 2,205,000 to be funded through the reserves. As chair of the committee, I so move. We have a sex seconded by Councillor Knockwood. Any discussion? Question. Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion has passed unanimously. Item number two. 2022 infrastructure capital funding priorities. Staff are anticipating a next round of federal infrastructure funding to be announced early in the 2022 calendar year in support of shovel ready projects. It is a standard application process request to have on record council support for a project funding submission for both federal and provincial applications. The Infrastructure and Operations Committee recommends to Council that Council prioritize Capital Budget 20-038, the Enfield Water Treatment Plant Capacity Upgrade, and are in support of a funding application. As the Chair of the Committee, I so move. Second. The seconder, seconded by the Deputy Warden. Is there any discussion on the motion? Question. Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary? Motion is passed unanimously. Item number three, recycling processing contract. The Infrastructure and Operation Committee recommends to Council that Council approve a single source procur procurement with the municipality of Colchester for the recycling processing of East Hands materials for a period of two years at the rates proposed. As chair of the committee, I so move. Seconded. Seconded by Councillor Hebb. Is there any discussion on the motion? Question. Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary? Motion is passed unanimously. As the chair of the committee, I move the adoption of this report. Seconded. Seconded. Seconded by the Deputy Warden. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary? Motion is passed unanimously. Returning to our agenda. Next, we have the Planning Advisory Committee report. Over to you, Councillor Green. Thank you, Warden. The committee held its regular meeting on January 18th, 2022 via Zoom. The following motions are coming forward as a result of this meeting. Item one, Poor Tree Jack, rezoning and redesignation Mount Uniac first reading. The municipality has received an application from Donald Martin of Poor Tree Jack Enterprise Incorporated to redesignate and rezone property in South Uniac from rural use to the established residential neighborhood zone. The application previously requested a redesignation and rezoning to R2. A public information meeting has been held 
staff are recommending first reading to the amendments to enable consideration of the change to the R2 zone. The Planning Advisory Committee recommends to Council that Council give first reading to amendments to the MPS and LUB that would change a portion of PID number 45141496 from rural use to established residential neighborhood designation and from rural use RU to established residential neighborhood R1 zone for the purpose of authorizing a public hearing and authorize staff to schedule a public hearing. As chair of the committee, I so move. We have a seconder. Second. Seconded by Councillor Musa. Is there any discussion on the motion? Question. Question's been called. Did you have a question, Deputy Warden? Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, did, is this uh, just a, a one-off or is this going to affect all our use? Uh, to you, Madam Warden, no, th this is just for this property. So they're seeking to redesignate and rezone one property. We're not proposing to change any regulations. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Question. Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary? Motion is passed unanimously. Item number two road gap project. In June of 2021, Council made a motion, C21194, directing staff to review and bring forward a report outlining options for paving the publicly owned on paved gap roads found throughout the corridor. Attempts to pave these sections of roads via the petition process outlined in the local improvement bylaw have failed in the past. The staff report recommends Council impose a local improvement for these gaps roads and proceed with OTA petition. Furthermore, staff recommend council authorize staff to apply a $150,000 lump sum municipal contribution toward the entire paving project. The Planning Advisory Committee recommends the council direct staff to bring another report back to committee regarding further funding alternatives for scenario two and more detail on the road gap project. As chair of the committee, I so move. We have a seconder. Seconded. Seconded by Councillor Hitt. Is there any discussion? Question. Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion has passed unanimously. Item number three, protective fencing for construction sites, bylaw P-900-1 and amendment to bylaw P-900 building bylaw. Council directed staff to prepare a report to investigate options to secure construction sites. Planning staff have reviewed protective fencing of construction site regulations from other municipal jurisdictions and have developed an East Hance approach for Planning Advisory Committee to consider. The Planning Advisory Committee recommends the Council direct staff to bring a report back to committee with further actions and information to consider for immediate response for emergency situations regarding protective fencing for construction sites. As Chair of the Committee, I so move. Second. Seconded by Councillor Musa. Is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, Deputy Warden Mitchell. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the report's coming back to the committee, but what, uh, what can be done in the meantime to rectify the dangerous situations that you might have? Uh, through you, Madam Warden, there is a, an in-camera report uh, later this evening to talk about that one property. Okay, thank you. Question. Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion has passed unanimously. The Planning Advisory Committee also recommends that Council direct staff to write a report on the construction site at 428 Highway 2 Enfield, including photos, and bring it to Council next week to determine if action should be taken. As Chair of the Committee, I so move. Second. Moved and seconded. It's almost redundant, but yes. anyway, is there discussion on the motion? Good question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary? Motion is passed unanimously, and I would note that we do have a, a report uh, where it deals with a legal issue, which we will receive later this evening. A motion recommending first reading of bylaw P-900-1 will come forward later in the meeting. 
Item four, plan update, floodlands background paper. As part of the ongoing plan update, planning staff are preparing background papers to discuss and propose approaches to different land use issues within the municipality. The current background paper discusses land use planning for zones adjacent to major watercourses in the future planned area. The Planning Advisory Committee also recommends that Council authorize staff to prepare land use policies and regulations for floodplains, floodlands, based on the direction in staff's report dated January 5th, 2022, and also taking into account existing structures and those not considered permanent. As chair of the committee, I so move. Second. Seconded by Councillor Musa. Is there any discussion? You ready Aye. for the question? Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion has passed unanimously. Uh, item five, plan update, Mount Uniac GMA road paving background paper. In September, 2020, council passed a motion directing staff to review requirements for paved roads in the Mount Uniac growth management area. In this report, staff review the issue and recommend that current regulations remain in place. Committee agreed not to change regulations, no motion resulted. So as chair of the committee, I move the adoption of this report. Seconded. Seconded by Councillor Hebb. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion has passed unanimously. Okay. Next on the agenda aha, is first reading. Bylaw P-900-1, an amendment to bylaw P-900, the building bylaw. And I may have misspoke earlier. I believe this may speak to uh, the issue that was discussed uh, previously. Yes. Reading bylaw P-900-1, an amendment to bylaw P-900, building bylaw. The project planner presented a report titled Proposed Amendments Bylaw P-900, Building Bylaw Protect Protective Construction Fencing, dated January 11, 2022, at the January 18, 2022 Executive Committee meeting. The Planning Advisory Committee recommended an additional staff report to come forward at a future meeting and an update specific to the a location on Highway 2 Enfield, which will be provided later in this meeting. The Planning Advisory Committee also agreed to proceed with first reading of bylaw amendments. The Planning Advisory Committee recommends that Council give first reading to bylaw P-900-1 and amendment to bylaw P-900, building bylaw to regulate protective construction fencing. As Chair of the Planning Advisory Committee, I so move. Seconded by Councillor Musa. Is there any discussion on the motion? We're ready for the question. Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary? Motion has passed unanimously. Okay. Next on the agenda is the warden's report. So I would turn the uh, chair over to the deputy warden. I'll accept the chair. Go ahead, Madam Warden, with your report. Thank you. Um, not a lot to report as we certainly, uh, I'm sure all enjoyed the Christmas break since our last meeting. Uh, I have uh, attended the usual directors meetings uh, once they started. Uh, I did attend a, a federal funding announcement at Findlay Park last weekend uh, where the uh, federal government has awarded the group there uh, somewhat over $123,000, I believe, for the construction of a, an amphitheater covered stage type structure, which is certainly wonderful news for that group. It was uh, very cold. No one lingered very long outside on the weekend. Uh, other than that, on a personal note, um, my husband and I certainly suffered a loss in the early hours of New Year's morning. Uh, due to fire of our barn animals and bridge and contents. And uh, 
not the way I want it to start out 2022 at all, but I would just like to thank uh, members of council and staff for your kind wishes and, uh, and support. Uh, it was certainly much appreciated. And I certainly, um, I always knew what a great uh, community, and when I say community, I mean my home community and our larger community. I always knew what a great community I lived in. And uh, I certainly um, am even more convinced of that now. So I'd just like to say thank you on our behalf for that. Um, and unless, as usual, I may have forgotten an event, uh, that is all I have to report at this time. Thank you. Any questions, Councilor, to the warden? Seeing none, I'll give you back to Chair, Madam Warden. Thank you. Next, we have business from councillors. Um, let's see, I'll start. I know everyone's screen is in different order, so I'm going to start to my left with Councillor Knockwood. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Well, it's been a pretty quiet month, but I get a lot of phone calls uh, uh, with some flooding issues down by the courthouse and also down Haysley, Haysley, Hayeswood um, subdivision. Um, uh, I know it's, a, it's a probably a province uh, issue, but it, it has to be dealt with. And I hope that, you know, Jesse sent an email to me and said he was, um, he talked to his counterparts there in the province, so thank you very much. But um, no, it has been uh, pretty quiet. But um, and also um, we have um, uh, with water. Um, people should be checking their water meters more frequently. You know, um, uh, we have one church who um, had a hard place to uh, look at their water meter, and, and they have a bill way up there. I mean, like eleven thousand dollars. You know, and and according to the, the church that it's the water meters in a crawl space and there's a lot of elderly women who um, run the church and you can't get down to the water meter. I, I hope some, that maybe there's some way to change the uh, location of the water meter if, if, if possible. And so this will never happen again. And uh, yes, uh, that's all I got to report. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, next, we have Councillor Green. Thank you, Warden. Uh, I too attended the funding announcement down at Findlay Park. Uh, it's exciting times down there. The park grows every year. There's new uh, new additions to it, and uh, it's getting bigger and better all the time. Other than that, uh, that is about all I have to report. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Deputy Warden Mitchell. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just a few items. Uh, talking with the Elmsville Fire Department, there's no rate change uh, for the next fiscal year. I attended the uh, pop-up uh, rapid test uh, function this, this morning at the Sportsplex and helped distribute 540 uh, rapid kits. We ran out, we started at 11, and ran out at 1220. With regards to having a uh, Another venue uh, that'll be discussed by by staff. Only two, three members of uh, the library staff were there, so my addition made it much smoother. The parking lot filled up very quickly, but everything went smooth, and there were still people coming after we had finished. And it was disappointing to tell them that there was none left. There was some flooding issues. Uh, and the, and the last big storm we had, and some residents are on the impression that the municipality is responsible for clearing the ditches of snow. And my understanding was that it was uh, their responsibility and because the highway owned some and they were filled in quite badly. Some got some water because of the water didn't drain away. And the last item did deals with a an acknowledgement, uh, I had talked to the CEO about it when the Nova Scotia Federation of Municipalities had added to their land acknowledgement, an acknowledgement of African Nova Scotians who have been in Nova Scotia for over 400 years. And I'm just going to see if that has gone anywhere from the CEO. And that's my last issue. Any comment on that? Uh, 
through you, Madam Chair. I, it hasn't been dealt with yet. Okay, okay I'll leave it with you. Thank you. Thank you. That's all, Madam Chair. Thank you. Councillor Hebb. Thank you, Madam Warden. It's uh, pretty, pretty mild up here as well. I did have the opportunity to uh, present an 80th birthday wishes on behalf of the municipality to uh, Christine Parker, and uh, she is very excited to receive that and and uh, wish to thank the municipality for that certificate. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Perry. Uh, thank you, Madam Warden. Um, just uh, a few things that uh, have, have come up. Uh, one of the good things that came out uh, this past, well, a week ago or so is the provincial uh, high, high, or public works work plan for the new year. Um, and it looks like uh, from Uniac Mines Road to the South Rodden Road on Highway 1 is in this year's uh, paving plan, as well as the Uniac Mines Road is slated for 2022-2023 under the Gravel Roads Program. So both those things have been very big in the community uh, points that definitely need to be done. So it's good to see those uh, on the provincial work plan, as well as we talked about before, um, the South Uniac Road Bridge. Um, that appears in this report as well for 2026, 2027. So I would uh, just like to see if I can get, uh, like to make a motion to have staff mo monitor that to ensure that that is still uh, tracking and that uh, any deterioration of the bridge gets reported uh, uh, that comes from us can get reported through to uh, public works to make sure that that uh, stays on the radar. So, Councillor, are you moving that staff check the bridge or that they transfer any information they receive they, from the public to public? That they transfer any information they receive from the public to um, public works. Okay, thank you. Do we have a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Musa. Is there any discussion? You ready for the question? Question. Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary, motion has passed unanimously. Thank you very much. Um, one last thing. Uh, we had our library board meeting yesterday night, uh, myself and the deputy warden. And coming very soon, there is going to be a new library card issued um, for all for the whole province, with the exception of Halifax, uh, will now be under a one card system, which will now increase the ability for people to borrow any articles from any collection across any of the provincial libraries <laughs> and the library boards across the province, with the exception of Halifax, they still will have their own system. But this is going to alleviate the need to have uh, multiple cards if you're traveling anywhere for any period of time to uh, access library materials, both electronically and uh, in person order. So that's uh, some good news that'll definitely uh, help help people in uh, in our region. And that's all I have for you now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Councillor Garden Cole. Thank you, Madam Warden. Um, fairly busy in District 1 this month. Uh, I was at a CC, I attended a CCOA meeting as we uh, work towards the new build, which is very exciting um, as well. Just wanted to uh, get it out there that the Shining Star volunteer nominations are um, we're currently taking and the deadline is in early February for those who uh, would like to, for any, um, any groups who want to nominate a, a deserving volunteer. Um, I as well had some flooding in my district as well as in my own basement. Um, the uh, circumstances, the weather was certainly uh, ripe for, uh, for flooding. Uh, so very unfortunate for some residents and hopefully uh, that won't happen again. Uh, had you know, some snow removal issues as usual when uh, once the snow starts coming, and of course, um, some development concerns as well. And that's it for District 1. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Next, uh, Councillor Tingley. Uh, not a whole lot to report. Uh, I've been getting some inquiries from uh, local residents here about the road gaps, uh, just uh, waiting to uh, see what the final outcome is on that. And, uh, I've basically let them know that we had a discussion about it and it's going to come back to council and, and council will have another look at it and try to uh, come up with a solution. Um, I've been receiving uh, a few calls from senior citizens looking for uh, more affordable uh, 
rents, uh, and uh, I'm referring them to the province because uh, I think the, that's mainly a provincial issue right now. Uh, somebody mentioned they had inquiries about water bills. I had a few inquiries about water bills and uh, just respond to that. Uh, flooding, same thing. We had some flooding up here in Lance. Uh, one of the issues was uh, people not keeping their culverts clear and not realizing that it is their responsible ability to keep their own culvert at their driveway clear. And when it blocks up and it floods somebody else's property, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really their responsibility to keep it clear. Um, a lot of people are happy to hear about the new Hyde Bridge is going to be uh, installed in Lance to Dutch settlements uh, in the spring, starting in the spring. Uh, really pleased with the new interchange into Lance. Uh, definitely no complaints about that. Um, other than that, um, you know, no real big issues here uh, that I'm hearing about. Uh, that's about it. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Rhino. Yes, uh, just like report, I too attended the announcement, the federal announcement at Finley Park last Saturday, and I do agree with the warden. It was very cold, but it was a good announcement to get to try to warm the spirits. And it's just this, you know, I just want to point out that uh, when a, that is a shining example of what people can do when they pull together, that facility is uh, is number one in, in uh, East Hands. Uh, at the last month's uh, council meeting, I uh, crafted a motion around uh, writing a letter asking for uh, an elevator be installed in Cobbick Bay Manor. And we've since heard back from the province. And I just like to say I'm very, very uh, displeased with the answer we got from Minister Lore on that. Uh, you know, basically, uh, he's, you know, it's not in the budget. Uh, basically move your people that can't walk, put them downstairs, you know, with, and then that was the type of response that I think was uh, really kind of unprofessional in that. And he doesn't even take into account the, uh, the EHS and uh, fire department first responders and who have to uh, use and help people on the second floor of that and then bring them down by stair chair most of the time. So I just like to say that I'm very, very disappointed in the, the minister's response on that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Musa. Uh, thank you, Madam Warden. Uh, I, I received a lot of calls about the provincial plowing like for East Uniac and uh, the, the the residents were very right like the the clearing this year was very very bad and i think the reason why and we should send a letter or, co or communicate with the public works east uniac is a well traveled road now it's not like before with like all the construction in cottage countries and the new residents and people's gonna drive if the road, if the road is clear early or not they're gonna drive on it and they packed it and when, when the plow came to plow it, it, it was like sheet of ice. So I think they should, we should contact them and get them to get early on that road because it's a well-traveled road now. It's not like before. So I don't know, I don't know if we need a motion for that or... Okay. If, if we wish to ask them to change the standard for clearing that road, I think that would be yeah. appropriate. I, I, I would like to move that staff contact public work and ask them if they could uh, clear East Uniac Road earlier than their schedule because it's a well-traveled road now and there's a lot of residents that are not gonna wait, they're gonna travel on it. Thank you. Do we have a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Perry. Any discussion? If I could hand the chair to the Deputy Warden, i just make a brief comment. Yes, uh, go ahead, Madam Warden. I'm quite prepared to support the motion, um, but no just problem. to mention that uh, any change in uh, the plowing of specific roads will impact other roads that won't then be cleared as quickly. So it becomes a slippery slope. And uh, I think perhaps the uh, problem in, in my opinion is that over the past 20 to 30 years, 
the standards for road clearing have certainly changed and probably not for the better. And uh, also the budgets have changed for the departments and there is not as much equipment available and not nearly as many operators available. And the uh, operators that are out there I can't say enough good about them. They certainly are doing the very best they can with what they have to work with in, in the time frame. And it has certainly been challenging thus far this year. So uh, prepared to support the motion, just a caution that it, it may open the door to even larger discussions around road clearing in, in general down the road. Thank you. Go ahead, Council Musa. Yeah, I, I really agree. I, I agree with you 100%. Like the South Toronto Road wasn't even better than than the East Uniac. Like it was sheet of ice and the salt truck was even in a ditch in it. So I, I don't know what could be done. I understand what you're, what you're talking about and I really appreciate what they're doing. But if there's a... If there's a way to make it better for everybody, it would be a bonus. Thank you. Yes, go ahead, Councillor uh, Tingley. Yeah, I wonder if I could uh, make a motion. I had an inquiry uh, uh, in Lance from a resident. Uh, there's a, they call it a trail uh, that extends from Ashford. Excuse Court. me, Deputy Warden, but there's Deputy already a motion, have a motion on the floor. floor. Okay, sorry. Uh, Councillor Tingley, just wait a minute. Uh, does, does the director want to weigh in on the motion before? Uh... Um, thank, thank you, through you, Mr. Chair. I, I would like to seek clarification on the motion. Is the intent for the municipal of the motion to for the municipality to request a service standard review of snow clearing for East Uniac Road? So the it, the wording was more frequently, but um, I could go into more detail uh, just on the overall, how I tailor that messaging. If, if, if I've got the intent correct, I just want to clarify. Do you want it just an overview of the whole snow clearing service level based on the new traffic on East Uniac Road? Is that a fair assessment? Or, or what happened, like, like we never had that problem before, but this year I had so many calls and that's why I'm trying to do something about it if we can, so. Okay. You're clear, Deputy uh, Director. I'll give you back to Chair, Madam Warden. Okay, uh, Councillor Perry. Yeah, I was just uh, speaking in support of the motion because one of the things that I, uh, I've i noticed too is um, sometimes like, uh, I don't know if it's an equipment issue because I do know uh, during the last couple of storms, there's been three or four pieces of public works equipment in the ditch out this way. And uh, they've had, they've had to take a lot of resources to get it out. So I, my hat goes off to those people that are out doing, doing that job and having, and having to deal with, uh, with the road conditions as well, trying to make them clear. But uh, coming down the, coming down, I actually was coming down the East Geniac road in the middle of a storm. And, you know, I got a four wheel drive truck, thank goodness. But when I passed the, plow coming the other way it was five inches off the ground not touching any snow and there was four inches of slush and ice on the ground and just nothing was getting moved right now i don't know if maybe that wasn't the plow for that part of the road at that time um but uh, I, I i definitely do think i agree i full support of councillor moose's uh motion and i think some of it's going to come back to public works is going to be the conditions of that road uh make it very difficult for those for those operators to clear it because the road is is heaved and buckled in so many ways that there is no clear way to clear some parts of that road so um did this this hopefully will open their eyes and they'll take a look at the road condition as well because it's definitely hampering their efforts thank you any further discussion on the motion question questions been called all those in favor aye, aye. contrary Motion has passed unanimously. Anything else, Councillor Musa? Yeah, I want to mention to planning staff that private road we have the best roads in that in those two storms. So I think we should keep them. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. <laughs> they were like clear early in the morning, like the first road to be clear with the private roads. Okay. Thanks. Councillor Eisner.
You're muted, Counselor. Thank you, Madam Warden. Uh, I did the same thing with roads and snow and talking to people. It's winter time. Um, also, I went down to the infield fire hall, helped out there with the COVID. It was eye opening to see that people lined up outside, started at 10 o'clock, finished at three. Uh, it was interesting to uh, see how people are, they want to get their tests done, but you probably could use more people at those things to help out. Anyways, that's that's about it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Well, that concludes business from Councillors. Councillor Tingley. Yeah, I just had one other item. I had an inquiry from a resident in Lance regarding uh, a pathway that goes from Ashford Court to uh, Highway Number Two. Um, it's a, it's a paved path pathway. It's called uh, the name on it is Bud's Trail. And I guess the municipality paved it and and owned the property. Um, it's not being maintained, but all the a, a lot of the residents there use it as a, a walkway to uh, walk to the uh, sidewalk on Highway Number Two and then go for their daily walks. So uh, I'd like to make a motion that staff be asked to bring a report to committee for budget deliberation on the option. Uh, options and related costs to maintaining the municipality owned paved parks as part of the winter maintenance budget. Paved paths, you mean? Paths, right. Is there a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Perry. Any discussion? Question. Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary, motion has passed unanimously. So folks, that concludes business from councillors. Um, we have left some in-camera items. We have uh, a legal issue, three land issues and one contractual issue. So I would be uh, looking for a motion to go in camera to discuss those issues. So moved. So moved. Moved by Councillor Perry, seconded by Councillor Knockwood. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary, motion has passed unanimously. So councillors, we will just um, give staff a few minutes to uh, stop the live stream and uh, set the recording for the in-camera session. Just a moment.